So I first experienced gender dysphoria around age five. Mom, dad, uh, I think something's wrong with me. So I had my top surgery. It ended up being one of the most traumatic uh, experiences of my life. I'd seen all of these pictures of these trans men with the perfect top surgery. They are selling this in a romanticized way. It was sold like that to me. They told me that transitioning would be the cure to my problems. Everything I've been feeling would go away. But what they didn't tell me was that I'd actually suffer more. I have permanent nerve damage. I had to watch Matt be bedbound for months. I would wake up in pools of blood. I have infections. My head has constantly felt like it's in a vice. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't take care of the person that I love. I have seizure-like uh, spasms all the time. I have a tick that comes and goes. The ticking got really bad at one point to the point I was slapping myself around the face in front of people. The medical industry sells this lie and then they can't fix it. I'm stuck looking like this for the rest of my life. You can take hormones, you can have surgery and look a certain way, but it doesn't change who you are. It never goes away. It just gets worse because you do all these changes and you can't reach that goal. You can't reach it. You will never reach it because you are not that gender. They lied to me. They lied to my face. And now know that all of it could have been avoided if I'd have been told the truth. If I can save just one child from this, then I would die happy. It was torture. I was raised atheist. Um, my family were never believers. I was getting really overwhelmed. I remember standing in my room and I called out and I said, Jesus. And all of a sudden, uh, I just felt this overwhelming wash over me of peace that I have never felt in my life. I actually had a uh, really hard phone call with my mom and I told her that I was uh, I was sorry for taking her little girl away because that's what it that's what I did And what's up, Utah? Welcome back to We Are The People Radio. It's your host, Jason Preston, again with my beautiful bride. How we doing, baby doll? Very good. Yeah. You are good. Yeah. Um, as you saw from the trailer, we saw that trailer in Arizona, what, about? Uh, a few months ago. A couple months ago. We were down at an event in, in Arizona, a lot of the Patriots, and uh, actually with Steve Sorensen, he's the director that did the uh, video uh, Beneath uh, Sheep's Clothing. Julie Beeling, yeah. With Julie Beeling. And... Um, we saw that trailer leaving Amy, and we're like, oh my gosh, in a world, in a state of Utah where they're pushing this stuff so hard. And so it was actually awesome. Not only did we see the trailer, but we met uh, Amy uh, and, and, her, and her wife, Jude. Uh, and so we said, we have got to get you to Utah. Uh, we've got love to have you on the show. So here we are. Here we are. So we, we, this is a special treat for Utah because uh, you want to talk about someone with an incredible story. Uh, to be able to understand what's really going on, what's really beneath these surgeries, what's beneath the transitions that they don't tell you. So um, before we jump in, please make sure you're following us on our website, wearethepeople.org. Make sure you subscribe there. Uh, that way you, we can email out their content. We are getting shadow banned very heavily on Instagram right now. You already know our YouTube's been taken down and re-put up. 
So if you subscribe, we can just send out this content to you. And if you have subscribed, check your junk. Sometimes it gets put in there. Um, so that, that's enough of that. Other than if you want to hook us up and help us support us by buying Patriot Punch or a shirt off our website, that'd be awesome too. But enough of that. Let's introduce our guests. Yeah, we are absolutely honored to have with us today in studio with us, Amy and Jude. Uh, they've been together for four years, married for three. Uh, they are both members, uh, board members of Gays Against Groomer. We have Jude, who is the director of communications, and then Amy, who is the director of... Content. I can't even read my own handwriting. This That's all right. I, I'll read it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we are, we are thrilled to have them in with us today and to hear their story and to hear how this all came about because it, it truly is a remarkable story. So, yes, so we're so happy to have you with us today. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us, both of you. It, um, it means a lot. Um, we need to get this out there. Yeah, no, we were, we were so, so impressed. Uh, honestly, you can't watch that trailer and not be, like, touched. So we're thankful to have you. And uh, Jude? Hi, thanks for having us. We are very glad to have you, too. To we got two, two for one. So it's, it's even a bigger deal. So you guys, this is like your life, right? I mean, this yes. is like you guys do this together. Yeah. You're married, and you're, like, on a crusade I mean, to like warn people or what, I mean, what, Sounds what's familiar. your mission? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what's you awesome. You get it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome when you're married to someone who has the same vision, the same mission. Well, I mean, so what, tell me, I mean, what is, if you guys have a, a mission or a, what would it be? What is it? What do you guys, what is your mission right now? We want to save children from this evil agenda and also parents from being gaslit because that's what's happening right now. You know, these, these parents who are trying to protect their child's well-being are being told, would you rather have a dead daughter or a live son? And it's absolutely sickening. And, uh, you know, this idea that children are going to kill themselves if they can't transition is absolutely ludicrous because in my situation, when everything started to go wrong and I got sick from this so-called gender-affirming care, I was more suicidal than I've ever been in my life. And so it's awareness for the parents it's awareness for these children so they realize they're being sold a lie and also to make the public aware who are unknowingly pushing this because of what they're being told in the media so yeah because i mean in utah like and, and we'll, we'll get into it a little bit but we have a, a governor here that uh, is promoting these you know transitions he promotes you know girls and uh and or men and women's sports and men and women's bathrooms and he's very pushes the lgbt you know that, that agenda very heavily from the top here. But I'd like to hear, before we get into any of that, I would love to hear, um, Amy, your story, if you don't mind. Because it was, we hear a little bit of it there in the trailer, but uh, you started having gender dysphoria, you said at five years old. So would yeah. you mind kind of telling us a little bit, your, our audience, a little bit of your story? Yeah, so the first time I experienced the gender dysphoria, I, I was five years old and my mom took me clothes shopping and obviously when you're younger your parents pick out what you're going to wear and uh, she took me over to the little girl section and I remember thinking why is she doing this and I was looking over at the boys section like shouldn't I be wearing this and it was really confusing because as a child I didn't know what gender dysphoria was all I know is that I felt like that wasn't right for me it, it was wrong and uh, as my childhood went on you know it became a more constant thing I would tell my parents and when I first told them at age five they laughed and rightly so because you know when you're a kid you think you're a unicorn and all sorts. <laughs> a Amy where'd you grow up? I just hear the accent. Uh, I grew up in the south of England. Okay. A little seaside town um, near a place called Bournemouth. Uh, it, it was kind of isolating growing up there to be honest I didn't really fit in with all the other kids and the ones I did fit in with were boys as well which if only anything like led me more down the path. Okay. Did you have siblings, brothers, sisters? Yeah, I had. A, I have a younger sister. She's four years younger than me. Um, called Izzy, and uh, she's a girly girl. You know, she's the complete opposite to me. <laughs> um, and I think that also, you know, led things to being how they were as well. Because my my mum really wanted a girly girl, and then I, you know, part of in the trailer when I said I think there's something wrong with me, I was so confused as to why I, I couldn't be that, and the more I tried to be that, because I did, especially when I reached teenage years, you know, because uh, I grew up in the 90s, I'm, I'm turning 33 this year, and in the 90s it was even taboo to be gay, so uh, my mum would say to me, and so would my dad, you know, hey, you might be a tomboy, that's fine, oh, you, you could be a lesbian, that's fine as well, and hearing those words in the 90s when people in my school who came out as gay were being bullied was so terrifying for me. Like, I couldn't think of anything worse. So I think that also might have led me down the transition path because of the fact that, 
you know, if I presented as a male, maybe I wouldn't get judged for having the feelings I do. You know, it was it was a very difficult time to grow up. And uh, at the time, every time my parents suggested things, I thought they were being cruel. But from an adult perspective, looking back, I had the best parenting possible because they were willing to let me express myself without going down this very dangerous path kids are being pushed onto now. You know, you, you see a very different atmosphere these days where, like you said, 80s, 90s, it was very taboo to be considered anything on the spectrum of forget about the GBTQ mm -hmm. plus plus just being gay in the in the 80s and 90s was was taboo enough. Um, but now these days you see parents and at least what we've seen here locally with the push towards trans, the push towards non-binary, what have you, you're almost seeing the parents encouraging that behavior. Um, almost like they want their kids, you know, oh, well, I didn't have the girl that I wanted to. I, this is my sixth girl, so why don't I just have the prized child be the boy that I always wanted or the girl I always wanted? So you see that encouraging, and that also almost begets this dysphoria. So it's good to hear that your parents were at mm -hmm. least open to it, but not so much forcing it on you like you're seeing today they were and it's really scary when you look at how it is now as well because you know kids are going to school and if a girl likes the color blue or toy car she's being told she needs to transition and uh, they're doing this in the name of being progressive but i can't think of anything more regressive than that to tell an innocent child that they're in the wrong body when they're just expressing themselves so tell us a little more about your, your story so you five o'clock or five years old you start to, to you know experience gender dysphoria how how does that how tell walk us from there to you end up marrying Jude you end up doing the sh have, having surgery some at some point walk us through that a little bit if you don't mind okay yeah so um I was going through college and I started um, self identifying uh, as male around two thousand and nine but I didn't go down the medicalization route yet because I was trying to I wanted to do performing arts back then you know and uh, it would have like held up my education so I ended up waiting to adulthood which I'm actually glad about but also not because I still got sick and that's why I'm even more pushed to help these children but uh, I met Jude in uh, 2020 um, Jude was viral um, for speaking out flipping from her party which you, do you want to talk about that quickly and then I'll carry on yeah yeah so that's that's what happened hey what's up Utah hope you guys are enjoying this incredible story from Amy and Jude uh, due to YouTube and their censorship policies, uh, we're going to ask that uh, you finish this show on Rumble. So if you click down the link below, uh, there's a link for Rumble where you can finish it. We love, we wish we could keep it here, but we know we've had so many videos taken down by YouTube. And so from now on, our policy is if there's something that we think could get censored, we're just going to pause it and then have you guys finish the uncensored version on Rumble. Uh, also, if you can please like, comment, anything you do to help us grow the algorithm. We knew need YouTube because that's where most people are. And our goal is to find the great people here in the state of Utah and the surrounding areas that... Uh, don't know about this content, don't know about what's going on, and YouTube is, is one of the most important places to to find them and for them to find us. And then ideally, uh, we have them you know, migrate over to Rumble where we can actually get information out without it being censored. So thank you guys for all the support. It's been amazing to run into you guys at grocery stores, run into you guys um, in all sorts of crazy places. We have some of the most incredible people in this state. And uh, you guys just inspire Alexi and I so much and just make it... Uh, I don't know, you, you definitely inspire us to keep fighting. So God bless you guys. We really appreciate you, and we'll see you on Rumble.